I guess in this video I'm going to detail the overall process of creating our Hyperly, so I'm not going to go into massive detail on the modeling and how to model like a complete Hyperly, but we're going to give some like um, tips and some good practices that you can follow. So this is a skin I created recently. Um, this is the copper set. So I'm going to use this as an example to show you how you know, low poly relates, relates to our high poly and um, you know, how we bake it down and how we texture. So for this example, I've split out my low and my high, but normally when you're creating your high poly, it will be directly on top of your low poly. And obviously you'd, you'd hide your low poly as you're working on it. We'll cover later on in the video, like um, why your high, high, your high and low needs to be in the same position and sort of like the, the cage offsets and the baking offsets that we need to use. So yeah, I just thought that's worth noting that the object would be like this if you actually were making the skin, but I'm just putting it here for the video. I'm going to cover the naming conventions first. So in the last video we created our low poly and we split out the parts and name them underscore low. So as you can see, I have a light hoodie underscore low, pant underscore low, shirt underscore low. And then when we're creating our high poly, we want to follow the same naming conventions. So for example, on the hoodie underscore low, we've also got the related parts of the high. So the hoodie underscore high. And these, you have to spell this exactly how you spelled the low. So hoodie underscore high, hoodie underscore low. And basically what that means is only these hoodie underscore high parts will bake onto our hoodie underscore low when we go to baking. Um, this helps, um, like if you're baking two parts that are close to each other, you're not going to get overlaps and you're not going to get baking errors. It's basically another way of like splitting out your model in the 3D space, but you don't have to do that because you're grouping the, the baking uh, groups. I think a common misconception is that you only need to have, or you can only have um, hoodie underscore high as one whole object, so you can't have loads of separate objects, but that's not true. As you can see here on this hoodie, I've got lots of separate parts um, that are their own objects, but I'm still just naming, and naming them the same convention. And then Blender automatically puts uh, another suffix after the high, and that doesn't matter, that can, that can be any number you want. Uh, yeah, I just let Blender do that for you. And basically, when you export all these objects, it will it will export as one object, but you'll have you still have all these individual parts. But that's fine. Another really common question I get is, you know, how do I actually make the high poly? So there's a lot of different methods of making the high poly. So I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I can briefly explain the sort of um, methods that you might use. So. Some people might, for example, just use the game low poly, uh, duplicate this and then work from that low poly so you can sort of, you know, duplicate, start selecting faces, insetting and, you know, doing whatever you need to do to make your design. Some people might take this, remesh it, and then use subdivision to get a smoother model. You could also go the route of like creating a a model that's not based off the low poly, so you're just using your normal modeling techniques to arrive at a high poly, and then you might go on to sculpt that, for example. One of the main things you've got to consider when you're making your high poly is that, you know, it's not the model that's actually going to be used by the game, so you can't create um, like a realist, well, like highly realistic depth and you won't be able to see these overlapping parts when you're actually in the game. What your high poly is going to be doing is acting as something that you can bake down to your low and it'll basically transfer the details of the high to the low and then you'll be using like your texture maps to try and trick the game or the player into thinking that those details are actually there. So that's done by, say, say like the normal map that will create reflections off the edges and of the details so it's like the the game kind of like a uh, presents a low as the high but it's it's without all of the polygons of the high 
some general rules you want to follow when you're creating your hyperlias. You don't want to be too far offset of the surface. So here you can see like the silhouette of the item. And then you'd have like a set offset. So this is when you define when you're baking. You have like a distance from this. And generally you don't want to be, you know, like out here because it's just going to, the bake's just going to be terrible because basically how baking works is you're taking the individual faces of the low poly. So they're like this. And then what's what smooth shading does is it basically averages these out so you because so we're gonna have that, but you know, if you're baking something like a curve onto those flat faces like this, it will look good when it's here. But if you've got this curve all the way out here, you can see how like software will be taking this face from here and this face from here and you know it's just gonna look terrible uh, it's, it's not gonna bake well at all you just you just get a really bad bake so in general you want to be keeping your high poly as close to the low poly as you as you can that's gonna give you your best results but you can also venture away from the from like working really close to it and go a bit further out and then your other maps like your ambient occlusion will sort of like fake that depth. So, so you got something out here, and something here. You know, you're gonna get like an area of ambient occlusion here, and that sort of gives like the effect that that depth is actually there. But you want to use it sparingly. You don't want to have, you don't want to have like massive variations in your high poly. So it just won't be equal. And especially when you come to areas like, say, like these armpits. If you've got your model, like, imagine you've got like an offset here and an offset here, you're just going to get. Yeah, so, so, you want to be working as close to the model as you can. So, the way baking works is you can work away from the model, but you can also work below the model. So, I normally want to work, well, I normally work with like this zone here. I wouldn't really venture away from anything more than this. I'm actually just going to get bad results. Another trick I use fairly often is color coding my objects in Blender. And I'll show you what this is useful when we get to the baking stage later on. But basically, we can create an ID map. This ID map is really helpful for making, well, for when we're doing our texturing. It just means we can select the areas where the different poly objects are and we can sort of like mass those out. I'll give you an example here. So, if I go to studio shading. You can see how each of my individual objects have got a different material and a different color. I hope that was helpful. I probably haven't covered a lot of things you need to know to make a high poly. Like I said, the, the modeling aspect, you're probably just best following. YouTube tutorials, it's all transferable on how to make a model and how to school. So in the next video, we're going to cover baking.